What's up sellers and welcome to today's video. My name is Nick and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Inventory Performance Index, the IPI on Amazon Seller Central, what it means and what you can do to improve your IPI so that you can in turn make better sales. Really quick, before uh, we jump into this video, I want to remind you about our uh, Facebook group. It's a free Facebook group called the Amazon FBA Mastermind group with Nicholas Woolsey. And so there's a link in the description of this video if you wanna join that, totally free. And I just put out some content in there and we kind of uh, keep a conversation going around Amazon. It's a great little community to be a part of. So if you want to join that, be sure to click the link in the description of this video. With that being said, let's jump into this video and talk about our inventory performance index. All right, so right here on Seller Central, on the actual home page of Seller Central, you can see uh, you have this list of menu options or uh, items that we can go through. Uh, we're looking at inventory planning down here. Uh, it is right below sales summary where you would see your dollar amount. And you can see there's a bar here that goes from a uh, red or pinkish color all the way through a light green and then into a dark green and this this bar is numbered from zero to 1000 and uh, you can see my score currently is 585 i wanted to make this video when i had a little bit lower of a score so that um, we can talk about how to improve this okay so basically what you can do is click on this and what the ipi does the inventory performance index is it looks over all of your metrics on amazon seller central and it basically gives you a score kind of where you sit as far as a seller goes uh 1000 being like top notch all your ducks are in a row and then zero being uh you should probably do some work on your um your account right and so there are four main factors that play into this and so let's jump in and look at them really quick Right here, we have excess inventory. You have the pink through dark green, sell through, same thing, uh, stranded inventory, and then in stock inventory. And so you can kind of see mine is in that reddish pink area for in stock inventory. I'm gonna show you how we can clear this up and make our, uh, make our account move toward a better standing with that IPI. When I back out, you can actually see this sort of like little caution uh, sign there that that needs to be taken care of. Uh, moving down here at the bottom, you can kind of see it says ways to improve your performance. Excess inventory percentage is 0 0.09. So really good, I think. Uh, not excellent, but pretty good. Um, very little excess inventory in there. My FBI sell-through rate is 1.2. Um, that's units sold divided by the inventory units average. And so, um, Basically, if you have a ton of inventory that is super high ranked, you're not going to have as many sales as if you had uh, lower ranked stuff and a lot of it, right? Because the lower ranked stuff sells faster. So what this tells me, this used to be closer like in the pink, my sell through rate was more in the pink. And so that means that I'm doing better at sourcing lower rank numbers, meaning that they're going to sell faster. Therefore, my sell through rate is uh, is moving towards the green. Uh, if you're only sourcing, you know, one million, two million, four million rank books, then uh, that is going to move into the pink because it takes so long for them to sell. You need a faster sell-through rate. If you're only buying, you know, uh, fifty thousand rank and under, meaning one through fifty thousand, those are going to sell extremely fast. Your sell-through rate is going to go through the roof. And so this kind of lets me know, hey, there's still some some a heavy amount of work that needs to be done when it comes to sourcing those lower rank numbers. Be careful what you buy. Maybe don't pick up so many million, two million rank books. Um, stranded inventory, I am literally at the top, I'm at 0% of stranded inventory. The percentage of FBA units currently stranded. Uh, I think I do actually have a couple, but I'm going to show you how to remove those so that you can get this number up fast. Getting this number up fast will, will bump your IPI substantially. And so don't get caught with uh, stranded inventory. That That's uh, very important to, to know there. And then FBA in stock rate, 11.06. The reason I'm in the red here is because I have so much inventory that has sold 
that the listings are sitting there inactive because the inventory has already sold. And so I'm going to show you here on this video how we can take that FBA in stock rate and move it higher because we want um, we want that in stock rate much, much higher. And it gives you some recommendations on the side of things to fix uh, with excess inventory percentage. It talks, it gives me a button here. Uh, it says there's two things that I can reduce excess inventory. I can improve my sell through here. Um, there's no listings to fix because everything is good there, it says. Uh, and then restocking today. However, because we are booksellers, uh, or rather I am a bookseller, and I'm assuming you are too if you're watching this, um, it's very difficult to restock a book that you're buying at a thrift store or at a, uh, a used bookstore because you have to find that book. If you were buying all these books brand new off of a website or a wholesaler or something like that, then it would be a little bit easier. But because we are buying from thrift stores and places where it's kind of like a grab bag of things, uh, then we don't really, we can't really restock this. So I'm gonna just show you how to move around this. And just so you guys know, the reason I'm doing this video is I've had a ton of people reach out to me and I even had uh, one consultation call where I walked a young lady through um, the entire process of, of sort of bumping your um, IPI number up. Hers apparently was in the red. And after talking and implementing some of the things that we talked about, she noticed her number starting to climb. It does take time. So the things that you do today will not be immediately reflected on your IPI. That's just kind of the nature of Amazon. Things take time. So the first thing we're going to attack is in stock inventory uh, because that right there is is uh, definitely the uglier of the things. So we're going to jump into, we're going to go up here to the top and just click inventory. Don't, don't grab anything from the drop down menu. Just click inventory. Then we're going to click on this side right here. We're going to select, hello, inactive. Okay, you can see that I have 2,630 inactive products. Uh, the majority of these, if not all of them, are books. Um, on this page, lower right-hand corner, I actually have it out of the screen. Uh, it's going to give you an option of how many items you want to list or show on each page. I have mine set at 250. The reason why is because I have so much inventory that I need to basically get, like delete. I need to delete myself out of these listings so that they're not sitting inactive. Right here where it says date created, I'm gonna click on that. It says date created and then it says status changed date. So there's the date you created, which on this top one is 8-13-19, and then there is uh, the status change date, 821. That's That 821 is the date that that went inactive because you sold it, okay? Or because it, in this case, it was reserved. So that's been accepted by Amazon and they have reserved it, meaning that they're either shipping it to another fulfillment center or uh, someone has put that in their shopping cart and it, we're basically waiting for them to click checkout. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're going to click that arrow again. So now it is ascending. We're looking at the oldest things that we have um, in, in inventory basically. So I see that I have stuff that I created on February 22nd. And that went, uh, that sold on March 31st. So that's super old, right? Why is that even in here? Basically what I try to do is this. I go through, I find these ascending dates and I delete everything prior to one month ago today, right? So today, as I record, this is August 21st. I'm gonna take everything from like July 20th and back. So everything before July 20th, and I'm going to delete myself out of those. That way it won't show up as basically out of stock inventory and I'm just sitting on it, right? So let's go through, scroll down to the bottom and see we're at June 5th, June 5th. All right, so we're at the bottom of this page. There's 250 listings on here and they are all uh, June 5th or prior. And so what I am going to do because June 5th is before July uh, 21st. I'm going to select all 250 of these. I'm gonna go up to action up here in the left, upper left-hand corner, and I'm going to say delete products and listings. Are you sure you will permanently remove the products or products you have selected and their associated SKUs from your inventory listing? 
Also, if you have any selected products with variations, those variations will also be permanently removed. Please note, after you delete a SKU from your inventory, you cannot add an identical SKU or associated product information until 20 out, 24 hours have passed. That's saying basically, if I have this book right here and I delete it from this listing today because it's old and I don't have it, but then I go source and I bring that same book home, I can't list it for 24 hours after I've uh, completed this action. So I'm gonna say, okay, I know I'm not going sourcing today, and so we're doing uh, we're doing this. You have selected 250 listings for the delete product and listing action. Do you want to continue? Yes, continue. And then we are good. So what I recommend doing is just going through this entire process time and time again until you have all of your old listings up to one month prior deleted. And the reason I leave the one month prior is because you never know when someone's going to buy something, hang on to it for a couple of weeks, and then want to return it to Amazon. And because there's like the A to Z, uh, no question policy, like they have to accept the, Amazon has to accept the return. Um, I just like to leave that one month window open. And so basically every month or every month and a half, two months, I'll go in and I will delete all those old listings. That way um, it shows that I have basically a full store and there's not a lot of inactive listings just sitting around collecting dust. So when we actually go back to, our seller central account. Uh, this number hasn't changed at all. However, it will change um, over the next week to two weeks. It takes time. Like I said, there is um, there's kind of a delay on it moving. Uh, but if you follow me on Instagram, I will update. Uh, I'll update you when that actually takes place and that uh, that change does occur. All right, guys. So the next thing that we can do is basically work on. Um, excess units or units that uh, are at the fulfillment center that are damaged or unfulfillable. And so what we're going to do there is we're going to go to the top where it says inventory. We're going to click on that inventory button. Right below that, you're going to see uh, listing enhancements and then remove unfulfillable inventory. Click on remove unfulfillable inventory. It could be unfulfillable for a variety of reasons. Anything from Amazon destroyed it or damaged it, or all the way to uh, you know something happened in the shipping process where UPS damaged it. Okay, uh, for whatever reason, Amazon is saying this is unfulfillable. So you have two options. Option one is you can have them dispose of it, and you pay I think fifty cents for them to throw it away. The other option is you can have it sent back to you, and you can check to see if it is truly unfulfillable. Uh, I think Amazon basically bets that most people are not going to have it sent home, right? They're not going to create the removal order to have it sent to their home. Uh, myself, I always do that. And here's the reason why. I had Amazon tell me that one of my items was unfulfillable and had been completely damaged. And so I created the removal order, had it sent to me. This item was 100% not damaged. It was an $80 book. There was not one thing wrong with it. So I don't know if, if Amazon is scamming, maybe they're taking some of these higher dollar products and selling them for themselves and just saying, Oh, it's, it's unfulfillable. It's, it's damaged. Or I, yeah, I don't know what they're doing. Another case for me though, was that, uh, I had an item unfulfillable. I created the removal order and they sent it back to my home. I open it up and it's not even the same item. So either they sold it under some other name, like I'm conspiracy theory and the mess out of this thing. Uh, maybe they sold it under the Amazon name. Maybe they switched somebody's order. They scanned the wrong thing. Like maybe they scanned something and sent my book instead on accident. Instead of sending me the item that they said was unfulfillable, they actually just sent me some random item. This has happened two times. And both times the item that they send me is actually worth more than the item that I sent in. So in one instance, there was a book. I would say it was a $15 book and they said it was unfulfillable. Something happened to it. Uh, I created the removal request. They sent something to me. Turns out it was an iPad uh, tempered glass screen cover, brand new, in the package, perfect. And it was going for $25. So I always recommend creating the removal order. It might cost you a dollar or two more in shipping to get it back to you. But every single time that I've created a removal order, I have not 
been disappointed. Very interesting how this works. So basically, the way that uh, the way that I do this is I go over here and I you can see that you know the top listing there is I create a removal order. My price is forty three dollars on this item. <clears throat> I have all my information already put in here. You're not going to be able to see that, but uh, it's my address. I put ship to address. You have the option to ship to an address or dispose. They're going to charge you 50 cents to dispose, or they're going to charge you a couple dollars to ship it to wherever you want it shipped to. Uh, so I ship it to my address. And then down here where it says uh, unfulfillable quantity, it says one, and I click continue. Yes. Cool. Success. Your order was successfully placed. Now, it's worthy to note that whenever you go on your Seller Central app, the Amazon Seller Central app, this will show up in your orders. However, it will not. Um, I don't think it's going to show up in your bar graph. It'll show up in your orders. So let's say your bar graph on your Amazon Seller Central count will show nine items sold so far today. If I go into my orders, it will show 10 items Uh but one of those is the removal request. So this happens, you know, if you request 10 removals, then you're going to have 10 more in your uh, orders list than you would on your bar graph. Don't be alarmed by that. Also, don't get too excited because those are things that are coming back home to you. What I do when I receive these items from that removal request, I go through them, I check them out. If they're truly junk, then I throw them away. If they're not, I relist them as a fresh listing and then ship them back out. This is I've done this like at least a couple dozen times. It just seems to work for me. All right, guys, I hope that made sense for you today. And I hope you kind of see the importance of your uh, individual performance index score and how, uh, you know, you can, uh, you can up those numbers just by a little bit of administrative work on your business. Uh, don't get so bogged down in the day to day sourcing and shipping and listing and all this stuff and neglect the you know, the back end stuff. There's a lot of administrative stuff that needs to be taken care of to ensure that your business thrives and continues to uh, make those steps forward and to make that upward growth. Okay. Uh, what happens whenever your IPI drops too low? Well, simply put, you start losing sales. Amazon starts allowing sales to go to other buyers. You're going to end up losing the buy box. If you are eligible for that used buy box or that new buy box, um, you're going to start losing the buy box. If you're your individual performance index drops too low. Uh, we want to avoid that at all costs. So keep that number high, work on it, adjust things as they need to be adjusted. Don't let those closed listings sit too long in the Amazon Seller Central platform. Uh, delete those old listings so that it keeps your store looking fresh and, uh, and get that unfulfillable inventory out as soon as possible. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope I earned your thumbs up. And if you are not already subscribed, please consider doing that if this video brought value to you. I look forward to hearing your comments and seeing you in the free Amazon FBA Mastermind Facebook group. Uh, link is in the description. You guys take care and I'll see you on the next video.